You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, I will talk about Juniper SRX pool-based source NAT and proxy op concept and configuration. With source NAT, all users with private IP addresses can access to the internet. With configuring a pool of public IP addresses, source private IP address of outgoing traffic is translated to the IP address configured in the pool. In the previous section, we have discussed different types of NAT and how they are used in the network. We have also started the configuration of source NAT. As you know, we have two options for source NAT. In the first option, source IP address of users is translated to IP address of outgoing interface, which we have configured in the previous section. In the second option, source IP address of users is translated to the IP address taken from pool of IP addresses, which will be discussed in this section. This is the topology that we have used also in the previous section to configure source NAT. The difference is that in this section, we configure a pool of IP addresses to be used for address translation. As you can see in the topology, users inside the network with IP address subnet 192.168.10.24 are connected to the internet through two interventing devices. The first device, Juniper SRX, translates the IP address of users inside the network to the subnet 192.168.1 and the IP address 129 and 130, which are configured in the pool. The second device, one rotor, which is not under my control, Translate the IP address in the subnet 192.168.1.24 subnet to a, a specific public IP addresses. This is the configuration of pool-based NAT or source NAT. In the first line, we configure a NAT pool with the name of pool 1, including two IP addresses from 192.168.1. 129 to 130. Then we configure a NAT rule set with the name of source NAT, which is applied for the traffic from inside zone to the outside zone. Inside the rule set, there is only one rule with the name of NAT pool. It matches traffic with the source of 192, 168, 10, SH24 which will be translated to the IP addresses configured in the NAT pool pool 1. In the last line, address persistent guarantees that source IP address of different traffic belonging to a specific user is always translated to the same IP address. In other words, IP address translation is always persistent. Now we can commit the configuration and test the result of the configuration by sending some traffic from inside zone to the outside zone. Copy and then paste and then commit. To send ping traffic to 888. Unlike our expectation, users inside the network cannot communicate with the internet. As you can see. And what is the problem? As you know, the source address of outgoing traffic is translated to, to the IP address configured in the pool 129 and 130. Therefore, destination address of return traffic before reaching Juniper SRX is the IP address configured in the pool. The problem is that by default, Juniper SRX, unlike Cisco firewalls, does not reply to the ARP request to the IP address configured in the NAT pool. Therefore, return traffic never reach Juniper SRX. In Juniper SRX, proxy ARP for IP addresses inside the pool must be explicitly configured. This is the command that we enable proxy ARP for 
IP addresses inside the pool. After applying proxy ARP configuration, we send again different type of traffic and we expect that the communication with internet is correctly established. Copy and then paste and then commit. First, I try to ping Google IP address and then telnet to the Google and also with another computer I make the connection with internet. Then with command show security flow session, we can check flow table to see how addresses are translated in the source NAT. As you can see, the IP address inside the subnet 121 and 118 are translated to one IP address configured in the pool 130 and 129 again 130 for the IP address inside the network 121 and again 130 because of the persistency but the IP address of 118 is translated to 129 we can also enable live monitoring of log file with the monitor start command run monitor start firewall and again sending traffic and then monitor a stop as you can see the IP address 10 118 is translated to 129 it is matched with a NAT pool and permit web security policy rules and for the other IP address 10 121 is translated to 130 and it is again matched with the NAT pool rule. Now I will discuss two options in the source NAT in Juniper SRX port no translation and overflow pool. However, I believe that they are not very applicable and you can ignore it except that you are preparing yourself for the exam. If you look at the output of session table or log file carefully, you will notice that in addition to source IP address, source port of traffic are also translated. For example, 10.121 is translated to 1.130 and you can see also that the port is also translated and 118 is translated to 1129 and you can see that the port is also translated with the help of port translation it becomes possible that many addresses inside the network can access the internet with just one or a few public ip addresses and therefore without for translation, the number of users with private IP addresses that can access the internet are limited to the number of public IP addresses. I assume that you know the reason and I don't need to explain more about it. With the configuration port no translation in the pool, we disable port translation and therefore the number of users accessing the internet are limited to the number of public IP addresses. And at the same time, let's limit the number of IP addresses just to one IP address. I delete the previous configuration and add a new configuration with just one public IP address in the pool. Let's copy the configuration and then paste and then commit 
Then we will try to access to the internet from two different sources. Uh, we expect that from the first source it is possible to access the internet, but from the second source it will not be possible. Let's check it. Here we have got internet connection and also for the Google and from the second source I will try to access to the internet but it's not possible. Then in the output of show security flow session you can see that at 10.121 is translated to 1.129 the only public IP address in the pool but as you can see the port is not translated and the second computer 10118 is not in the flow table that means in the second computer there is no access to the internet now with the option overflow pool interface inside the NAT pool we can ask Juniper when the IP address of pool is exhausted, then you have to translate the IP address of other users to the outgoing interface with port translation. Let's copy and then paste and then commit. With adding this option, now it's expected that the both computers are able to connect to the internet. Let's check it. The first one is still okay. And the second one is also okay. And we, when we check flow table or session table, as you can see, the first computer is translated to 129 without port translation but when the IP address of pool is exhausted the second computer is translated to the IP address of outgoing interface but with port translation and this is the application of no port translation and overflow interface